There you go. We're going to talk about that just for, just for a short, short time. There we go. Oh, I love that. Look at it. Isn't it cool? Watch this. Let's do it one more time. Come on back here. The other way. The other way, buddy. It's going to play hard to get today. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Pass the hand load. There we go. Come on, the other way. No, we're not. There we go. Okay, one more time. Something, technology is awesome when it works. Technology is also awesome when the person working knows how to work. One more time. There we go. Now watch. Can you imagine being a shepherd in the field? Just you and your buds out there watching over your sheep. You don't have internet. You don't have a walkman. You don't have MP3. There's not any, there's not 98.9. There's not 98.3. There's nothing but you and the stars. Wow. And as you're looking up, all of a sudden, you see an angel step before you. Wow. Wouldn't that be so awesome? I couldn't, I couldn't hardly even believe the sight. I will say last night I was walking to my mother-in-law's house. And I looked up in the trees and I saw trees way up in the air. And they looked like they, I didn't know if they were angels, if they were fireflies. I didn't know what they were. But these big old trees way up in the air, so big nobody could get to them without a helicopter, had lights in them. Sparkling lights. And I kept looking around and I said, God, is this a miracle? What is going on? I've never seen trees this tall with lights in them. What is going on? And as I began to look and as I began to pay attention, I noticed the person in the house that was in front of all this spectacular glory had one of those little bitty lights that shined on the house. And it didn't have it shining all over the house. It hadn't shined it up, so all those little lights were up in the trees, up above it. So the miracle was that little bitty light that you can put in the 1495 wall. Isn't that cool? All right. All right, let's all stand up. <clears throat> let's see here. Where is it? God is so awesome. All the time. God is awesome. God is awesome. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're alive and welcome from the Father. We thank you, God, that nothing is without you, Lord. You see everything. You know everything. You've got everything under control. We can trust you totally with everything that happens in our life. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and through us, Father, and help us, God, to see something special today, something so special that it will remind us all year long of this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's sit down here. Let's sit down here. Let's get this together. Now we got it going on, I think. I'm going to tell you what, this is so fun to work with sometimes. Let's see here. Let's see here. No, that's right. No, hold them out right. All right, let's try it this way. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Y'all read this with me. Praise God and pass the ammo. Here we go. Ready? Now let's read this together. And Joseph went up also from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth under Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living, or living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Give the Lord a little hand clap. <laughs> Amen. So I want to talk to you today on, 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 on five reasons that Christmas brings us joy. Why Christmas? Amen. So I want to talk to you today on, on, on five reasons 
that Christmas brings us joy. While Christmas is full of good news, I'm glad I didn't realize that that's what you were going to say today, sister, about the angels talking. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, I changed this Christmas message three times yesterday. I started with I started in, in one in one part of it and went to another part of it and finally last night I went to the third part and this is it and the Lord just kept speaking to me and saying tell the people how good a news they got coming amen you know uh, we live in a world of bad news bad news sells so much everywhere you look you see you know you hear Fox News say we report you decide we've got other uh, 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 news channels that says all bad 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 news. Bad news sales. People want to hear it. Amen. If you get somewhere and you walk into a place and the gossip train is running, you can't wait to hear some juicy gossip. Why? But you start passing out good news and people just kind of let it go on past it. Amen. You know, I know that this year is going to be a good year for us. You know why? Because I was looking up uh, 18, the number 18 in the Hebrew. You know what the number of Hebrew, uh, 18 means in Hebrew? It means new life. Did you know that? New life. It doesn't mean new life, but eight is the number of new beginnings. And so something special is coming in this year. I believe with all my heart, something special is going to happen. I believe uh, next year, this time, you're going to look out here and not going to have a place to sit. Amen. It's going to be so awesome. But you've got to see it here before you can see it here. Amen. You've got to see it here before you can see it here. So I see this. The gospel is a good news to the world that needs it. Now, now, the good news, let's just break down the good news just for this, this, this story here that we're talking about. Here's the good news. Broken down. Ready? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the perfect one for this actual time we're talking now is, watch this, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory and the glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Now this is the first appearance of Jesus uh, as a man, or as a, a, a in human form, the incarnation. This is his first appearance. And as it is his first appearance, it's the angel's first appearance to somebody as Jesus is born. And of course, the first people he comes to are the shepherds. The shepherds were considered the lowliest people there was. They could not testify in court. They weren't allowed in certain places. They smelled like the sheep. They were, they, they just, they were just considered the lowest of the low, but the angels came to them. And so as the angels come to them, it's, some, it's an awesome thing because he tells them, watch this. He tells us, let's read this again in, in verse 10. He says, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So then we're going to talk about five reasons why Christmas is good news. Amen. Number one. why Christmas is good news. Amen? Number one, it banishes fear. Amen? You know, as I do counseling, as I talk to people, I, I, the other night I told them, I said, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the Dollar General, I'll be back in ten minutes. Tops. It's just around the corner. An hour later, Linda says, are you okay? And I said, yes, I happened to run into somebody. And she said, Okay, take your time. 30 minutes later, she said, are you sure you're okay? I said, I ran in to somebody else. I didn't run into people to talk and chat and have a good time. I ran every time. I ran into somebody that was hurting. Not only were they hurting, they had just experienced death in their family. They had just experienced loss. They, had just, uh, they were fearing loss that was coming their way. No matter what was happening, these people, every last one of them, were dealing with fear. It seems like this in my own life. I see in my own life how Satan would love to bring fear into my own life, into your life. Because you know why? Fear is the most crippling of human emotions. Did you know that? Out of all emotions we've got, fear. Fear. So I say fear. Now I say fear not. Fear is the most crippling of human emotions. By matter of fact, you know that fear actually can paralyze you. It can paralyze you from doing what God's called you to do. Fear can totally shut you down. You know, fear actually can bring things on you that you don't have to have. Fear can prevent you from doing things that you should be able to do. Fear can keep you from going over hurdles that you should be able to go over. But instead, fear shuts us down. 
One of the words for fear in the Greek is a pistis. A pistis. A pistis. Pistis is the word for faith. So you got faith and an A in front of it meaning actually the absolute loss of faith. So when you allow fear into your life, it actually can zap you, drain you of your faith. There's things you could be doing for God. There's things you could be doing for yourself, for your children, or for your family, or even at your job. But fear can totally zap you. Now, that's why God, in His Word, I count them. God has in His Word 365 times fear not or a variation of fear not. Why does He say it 365 times? There's a fear not for every day of the year. Isn't that cool? Every day, God said, fear not. And so here are these shepherds. They're already lowly. They're already considered nobodies. They're already considered vagabonds. And here they are. They're out in the field. They're out here at night. They're only with their people because that's the only ones that will accept them. And they're sheep. And here comes this glorious sight. And now God is talking to the lowest of the low. That gives me hope. That when I need God in my darkest night, in my darkest hour, He'll send to me and He'll talk to me. And the same thing to you because God is no respecter of persons. Amen. So, so, 365 times. I, I, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I use it all the time. I talk it in my head all the time. I tell people about it all the time. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity. Spiritual timidity. Which means I'm going to back up every time Satan goes boom. I'm going to look around every corner. Scared something's going to catch me. Scared something's going to get me. He's not giving us a spirit of timidity, but of power. That word power is a form of dunamis, which means we're through the Holy Spirit. You have the ability to do whatever you need to do. And of love, which actually is agape, or agape, which means I can love the unlovable. Anybody here know an unlovable person? Don't point. This is my no one. I know some unlovable people, but I love them anyway. And I found out that I won them over with love. But I couldn't win them over anything else. I won them over with love. But the biggest thing I love is, I get them some spirit of, not spirit of fear, timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The word sound mind first means clear thinking, but it also means to think under pressure. Whenever I find myself under pressure, this is the first thing I quote. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, the ability to think under pressure. Thank you, God, that He knows when the pressure is coming. And He's already showed us and showed us very strongly that we can make it happen. Amen? Through Him. So I see this. God actually wants us to banish all fear from our life. Now, that's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Because I can go along and there are certain things I used to be afraid of and I'm not. You know, the, uh, uh, Linda was afraid of snakes. She was so afraid of snakes. And one day after church, I went over to the house and did the same thing with Sister Brenda. I, I've only done it twice in my life, but I did it. They'll tell you, it's a fact. I ain't making it up. This black snake was in the backyard. And the thing was a good old ways away. It was probably up from here to Brother Billy, Brother Steve, somewhere around there. And I took a shovel. And it said the thing's getting away, and she was so scared of snakes. And I just preached on fear. And I took the shovel, as God is my witness, I have witnesses there. I threw the shovel and cut the snake's head off. That Tarzan blood was in there, that's right. I think it was that Indian blood from that Hawkbill tribe. Amen. You know, that ain't out of those spears. And so, so, so. She walked up and touched the snake and she said, no, she said, don't be afraid. She said, I don't have to. She said, God touched me in the middle of that sermon and said, I don't have to be afraid of snakes anymore. She touched the snake and even picked it up. Of course, it didn't have a head, so it couldn't have been bitter. Did the same thing as Sister Brenda's one day. It's the wildest thing. God, I mean, I, I, I ought to go into the middle stuff. You know, if you need snakes out there, you need snakes out of your yard, bring me a shepherd. We'll take care of them. Amen. Okay. So now, God, somebody say, look at somebody and say, God wants fear out of your life. Fear is an unwelcome tenant in your mind. It's taking up space in your mind that you can't afford to give. It takes more space in your mind with fear than it does with positivity. Amen? So you have to remember, it's important that you keep the negative out of your mind. It takes up up to seven times more space in your brain than does the positive thoughts. I'd rather keep the positives going, wouldn't you? Amen. So now, so watch this, watch this. 
1 John 4 and 8 says, 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 4 and 18 says, There is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out fear. So how can I get beyond my fear? I hold on to God's perfect love. Knowing that God's got me, God's got a hold of me. You know, I, I remember my kids when they were little, they would, they, would just, they would just run to me, they would jump off of houses, they would jump out of trees and just thought, catch me, daddy, catch me. And I'm thinking, boys, you're going to get me killed. You're going to get killed. Why are you doing this? Because they trust me so much. And their daddy loved them so much, daddy wouldn't let them down. And so, sometimes I think they tried it, just to see if I was going to, I would drop them. Never did, praise God. But I'm telling you, that's the way God wants us to be with him. Catch me, daddy. Catch me, daddy. I, I'm falling, daddy. you got to catch me. Amen? So, so first, angel brought that good news. We don't need to fear. Now, 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 now watch this. Why do we not need to fear? Now, 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 watch this. Why do we not need to fear? Because he's brought us great joy. Amen? Notice this now. The Bible didn't say he brought great happiness. It's going to be a good news of great happiness. Okay? Didn't say that. Happiness actually comes from the word happening, which means the things around you, the things around you, the happenings around you, are pleasing in your sight. And when things around you are pleasing in your sight, then you're happy. And when things around you are not pleasing in your sight or satisfying in your sight, then you're not happy. God says, I'm not bringing you happiness. I'm bringing you joy. Because happiness comes and goes. But joy endures forever. You know, Yesterday was the anniversary of the death of my mother. And I remember on a Sunday night, I just got through preaching, and I was sitting by mama's bed. She had a bed in the living room, a hospital bed, and I was up there with her. She hadn't talked to us in a week. Her back was turned toward the wall. Her eyes, the, 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 the implants in her eyes had, had virtually just ruptured. And so she was turned with her back toward everybody. She'd been like that for several days, but hadn't talked to us in about five days. And I was sitting there, I was reading my Bible. I've been Mama's faith partner. Mama's my faith partner. And even up to this point, I'd whisper in Mama's ear, it's not your time yet. God's got you. It's not your time yet. God's got you. You hold on. God can still take care of you. She lost her legs up to here. You know, uh, uh, her kidneys were gone. It was just pitiful, pitiful, pitiful. But I was sitting there, and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, why do you want your mama around now? I said, because I love her. He said, no, no, no. Why do you want her here now? And I was carrying a conversation inside my heart with the Lord. And I said, well, Lord, I love her, and I want her around he said, honestly, he said boldly, do you want her here for her or for you? And I said, I never thought of it that way, Lord. I want her here for me. He said, let her go. And about that time, as I was reached over, reached over and had my hand on her, and I was praying, just praying, I don't think I was even making a noise. Mama turned around and looked at me and for the first time in five days started talking. And as she talked, she looked at me in an ear, almost uh, 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 unintelligible voice. She said, let me go home. And I said, Mama, I've been your faith partner for all these years, about 10 years with all this stuff. And I said, Mama, I've been here through thick and thin with you, and we've done a lot of fighting together, and you've come a long ways, you've bounced back. But the Lord told me, He's ready for you to let you go. So, Mama, what do you want to do? You want to go home? And she said, Yes. And I said, Mama, She turned back over, never spoke another word. Sun come up, we left, went back home, 
And we hadn't been gone hardly any time. And Daddy called said, you better get back here now. And by the time we got back right there, Mama had died. And last night when I walked in the house, I walked in the house and I was doing some Christmas stuff. And all of a sudden it just reminded me of the time I walked in that house. I left out Mama and told me to let her go home. When I come back in the house again, her lifeless body was there. And I reached over and I kissed her on the forehead. And the pain was so great. And then all of a sudden, in my eyes, I saw her with two legs. I saw her with healthy kidneys. I saw her with good eyes. I saw her young and running around. And nothing was bothering her anymore. And I saw her with my grandma and my granddaddy and all those others that had gone before us. And all of a sudden, the pain was replaced with great joy. I got so excited. I mean, I was just so excited. And I, I said, God, you've done something spectacular here. And that's when I realized, this this. God says, I'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peace that passes all understanding and joy unspeakable and full of glory. I couldn't understand it. I still can't understand it other than God put that joy in my heart. And for the rest of the time, yeah, there was a lot of sadness going on, but the rest of the time I had nothing but joy. Last night, when the first when the first heaviness started hitting me, because it was the anniversary of my mom's death, when, when the first heaviness started hitting me, all of a sudden I looked up. When I looked up, the Lord said, remember, she's walking and she's talking and she's running and she's having a good time in the Lord. And again, that joy unspeakable and full of glory rushed my soul. Let me tell you something. We got a God that knows when you've had enough. And he says, let me tell you something. Look, 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 look. I can imagine this. Can you imagine when, when, when Elizabeth, she was six months pregnant when, when Mary come to check on Elizabeth because she had John the Baptist. And as soon as Mary come in the room and John the Baptist sits the presence of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Bible said that John the Baptist leaped for joy in his mother's womb. Amen. I'm here to tell you something right now. Some of us have some, some, some dreams in the womb. Some of us have some, some, some ideas in the womb. Some of us have some promises in the womb and we're waiting for it to come to birth and we're sad because it's hurting. But you know what? If you can touch the Messiah, praise the Lamb of God, since His presence, your dream will leap for joy within you. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is the God of joy. One of the manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit is what? Joy. Amen. So now, not only is it joy, but I love this. This, this is so awesome. So I bring you good times of great joy for everyone. Amen. Is it free? This, this is so awesome. So I bring you good times of great joy for everyone. Amen. Is it for everybody? God doesn't have, listen, listen. God's got favorites. You know who they are? All of us. Amen. You know, I, I was watching that movie, uh, 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 Shaq, and I kept hearing the, the person playing God in that movie say, I'm particularly fond of that person. I'm particularly fond of this person. I'm particularly fond of that. I'm particularly fond. And finally, the guy in the dream said, he finally said, I notice you're particularly fond of everyone. Wow. God loves you. It's for everyone. Amen. Red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. So Tuesday night, or Thursday night, I went to the prison. And, and we were doing, I, I, I called two guys out to do counseling with them. And I called those two guys out. One guy came to me in shackles. He came to me in shackles. And when he got to me, I told him, I said, please, 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 you don't have to keep those things on when they talk to me. I'm not afraid of these guys. And the guy was up for first degree murder. And he come in with the shackles on. And when he gets up to me, they take the shackles off and they stick them in the room with me. I'd already talked with him one time before. And when he saw me, his eyes lit up. My eyes lit up. The Holy Spirit, you can feel the Holy Spirit in that room. And I grabbed that man and pulled him to me and hugged him. That guy hugged me back. And he said, how you doing, Pastor? I said, I'm doing great. How you doing? He said, I got the joy of the Lord in my heart. And we had us a good time. People kept, the guards kept looking in the window to make sure he weren't beating me. But it was the joy of the Lord. God was doing something there. It's for everyone. Even that guy that was, in, was, was being charged with first degree murder, he still had the joy of the Lord in his heart. So let me tell you something. I love this. It's for everybody. Watch this. Regardless of age, regardless of gender, height, or shortness, education level, the whosoever will, the whosoever wants. God loves us all. 
Amen? It's for everybody. And then this is good news. Nobody is excluded. Amen? I'm almost through. This is such an awesome thing. Amen? But not is it for everyone? You know, so I, I'm not a
but I had never experienced being born again until I accepted his death, burial, and resurrection and a new birth in my life. You know, that is one of my favorite scriptures. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and him with me. Amen? You know, I've I, I seen this a few years ago and I really loved it. And I wrote down part of it here, but I want to tell a little bit more. You know, this is so cool. See, this is all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. See, this is all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. When we're up here doing the praise team, it's not about us. It's about Jesus and leading y'all in worship, praise and worship. When I'm up here preaching, I can promise you, it's not about me. It's about God. You know, uh, 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 whatever I do, whatever I help people, whatever I'm doing to, to, to talk to somebody, I always remember it's not about me. If I get me, if I get looking in the mirror instead of looking out the window, I become sad. If I look in the mirror, and don't tell me if y'all look like me, y'all be sad too if you look in the mirror. I don't talk about that. When I get focused on me, that's when the problems happen. But it's when I get focused on others, that's when God starts lifting me up and charging me. Amen? I love this. Look, it's all about Him. Now, now I wrote this down, but I'm going to do something a little different. If we were having a plumbing problem, we need a plumber. If we were having a car problem, we need a mechanic. If we were having an electrical problem, we need an electrician. Here's this little thing I found. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator, which He did. He sent us an educator because He educated us. If God's greatest need was technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, He would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, He would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need is forgiveness. So God sent Jesus. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That's why God sent Jesus. Because He is who we need. You know, one of the, one of the uh, sermons that I was working on, and I'm still working on it. Maybe you won't hear it until next year. You may hear it at Easter. Matter of fact, it might be an Easter sermon. But I have heard a few times back and forth. And then as I was reading it, it really started hitting me hard. Without the incarnation and the birth of Christ, there could not have been a Calvary. Without Calvary, then there would not have been a doorway to heaven. On Calvary, Jesus the Creator, was helpless in the hands of His creation with His back on the cross, the wood. On the manger, in the manger, He was helpless as a baby in the hands of His creation. Wow. His back on the wood. We see these stables and they're nice. These stables, you see, this is all awesome. But back in that day, most of the time, stables were nothing more than caves. And the caves would be hung down, and the animals would go into the cave and protect them from the elements and protect them from whatever may be coming. After the cross, he was wrapped in grave clothes and put in the tomb. At Calvary, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. And placed in that cave. In a manger. Wow. You can't separate Calvary from Bethlehem. And you can't separate Bethlehem 